This gang is a Cicero made gang, one of the hardest sober. Cicero has always ran with the big boys, Chicago. Cicero was the first suburb to have organized crime and a gang problem, but we'll get into that later. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger in the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling. Six time failing, I went back to prison. Got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. So until la suburban, let's get this video on the road. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Gang Life. Hey, you're one and only JC. <laughs> you know, um, I believe Cicero doesn't get enough credit sometimes because you see I, I grew up in Cicero because that's where my dad lived so I would I would be back and forth from you know Christiana and 30th to uh, uh, Cicero over there by the there was a pool on 51st Street but we lived on like 14th Street and something there was a karate dojo right there that I used to go to Taekwondo and then the Noble Knights used to hang out right on the corner. Their, one of their leaders actually lived downstairs from where my dad lived. He was uh, he was a white dude. But Cicero has always had gangs. I mean, you could ask Al Capone. But there has been some powerhouses that have set their mark in Cicero and have pretty much, you know, withstood the test of time because they've been there for a long time. I'm talking about the 2-6, the 2-2 boys, the 12th Street players. The Noble Knights and the Lion Kings. They were already set. When I used to go see my dad back in 1988, the Noble Knights were on the corner, the 12th Street players were down the street, two two boys were by the pool, the two six were across the street, and the Lion Kings were all over the place. <laughs> but in the 90s, every gang in Chicago was trying to get a piece of the pie piece of the turf in Cicero. It's a lot of money in Cicero, there's a lot of business, there's it's good hunting ground. You know, so a lot of gangs from Chicago were moving in, trying to start hoods, maniacs, imperial gangsters, Ashland Bike. A lot of them tried, but some of them didn't make it. Some of them died out, and some of them just got shut down by the cops. With all that was going on, there were some kids that just wanted to party, and they loved lowriders, and I seen them pretty much start and grow. They started as a party crew. They called themselves the Latin Angels. Founded in 1989, Mexican street gang, pretty much. <laughs> Colors, white and royal blue. But remember, they didn't start as a gang. They just, you know, I, re I remember how much of a hard time these guys were given just because they were different, you know? And you guys like the Mohawk? I got mud going on. <laughs> they were different because this is when you know blood out, blood in, blood out, American Me had came out and uh they, they were dressing like they were from LA, you know, they were wearing the big baggy uh dickies and, and the Nike shoes, uh the hair nets, the white shirts, the belts, and I guess in Chicago, you know, that's you don't see that. You don't see Mexicans and low riders. I mean the streets are so bad you can't even drive a low rider, but <laughs> <laughs> Those potholes that tear your whole fucking rim off. 
but it was something new so people really didn't like it so you know it, it, they started getting you know messed with and I, and I seen it I seen it it started happening little by little because people wanted them to choose sides pretty much who are you gonna ride with are you are you gonna be and that's how Chicago is pretty much all the time it's like you need to pick a side or you're going to war with us everything changed when one of the shorties got shot and killed uh, Lalo um, by the Land Kings but it was a fight that was pushed by the Tutu boys, then the Kings came. And this is where I tell you guys that you might not claim anything, but you're guilty by association. So just by being there, they're gonna think that you're that. So don't don't think that just because, oh, I'm not Land King, you know, but I'm hanging out with them. Don't think that somebody didn't see you hanging out with them and then they're gonna put you down as you're a Land King. Because that's just how Chicago is. So just think about it, you know what I mean? Guilty by association. They started getting messed with by the 2-6. The 2-6 were coming in very large numbers from K-Town, Dark Side. They were coming from everywhere and they had already established a pretty size, pretty big size hood in Cicero by the police station. The day that the fight kicked off with the Land Angels and the 2-6 was a, I think it was a Friday summer at Morton East. They all met up in front of the school and that's where just hell broke loose. 2-6 uh, were chasing Land Angel, Land Angels were chasing 2-6. They ran onto Cermak. Uh, people getting shot at, rammed. Um, it was all out war that day when they finally kicked it off and they went to war. After that, the Land Angels uh, went under the wing of the Latin Kings. They forgave them for the shooting and they pretty much needed to click with somebody because a lot of these organizations that were really big, like the 2-6, were fucking with them and they came in big numbers. The 2-6 always had K-Town backing them up, so they were always coming in from K-Town into Cicero. So that helped them establish a big chunk of the hood and, you know, being able to hold it down. After the 90s, man, so many gangs flooded Cicero. It was crazy. The Land Counts, the Bishops, uh, Imperial Gangsters. I, like I said, everybody wanted a taste of Cicero, Burren you know, North Riverside. Morton East is one of, well, was one of the biggest high schools in Cicero. But like I said, guys, Cicero is no stranger to organized crime, gangs, nothing. It's always been like that in Cicero. If you go down Roosevelt, you'll see how they have little casinos and stuff like porno shops. And these are all been there since the Al Capone time. They've all been there, you know, it's in the outskirts. It's how organized crime would bend the laws in order to be able to, to make money, you know? All around, I love Cicero. Cicero is, I don't know. I have a lot of memories of Cicero. Got chased a lot down Cermak. It was uh, pretty hard to get to school and back to the house. <laughs> I've, I've told my story many times. Our gangs, Chicago's violent problem. All these shootings of young people in these past weeks and months. They have experts talking now and politicians. I mean, let's see what happens. Chicago has had gangs since day one. Over the years, the feds have targeted them as organized crime and they put away a lot of their leaders breaking the gang's infrastructure and laws pretty much. They left behind a broken gang, that's how I feel. And they're really not gangs no more. There's no structure, there's no laws, there's nothing. They're more like cliques, fractions, renegades. All these young kids in, this, in these communities are drawn into this because this is this is our community. This is what you see. This is how I grew up seeing what I wanted to be when I grew up. When you're a kid in that community, you learn from the streets. The problem is that a lot of us that were part of the problem, that made it out, 
are not going back to help. You, you barely made it out. Why would you go back to put yourself in danger again? Most people that make it out don't look back. They're glad that they made it out. Let's be real. You made it out, why go back? I, I feel personal responsibility to go back because I, I think about how I was uh, a kid alone running, you know, running around on those streets on my bike, uh, looking for guidance, looking for, for a hero, looking for a mentor. I mean, just looking for a father figure in my life, really, to tell you the truth. My dad was never around. He was always at gyms working out, you know, talking to women. Um, uh, he was doing his own thing. And, and I think that's where, you know, I learned to be actually very, very selfish from him. Me, you know, being the way he was with me. And I picked up that trade and then I started, you know, learning that. And I, I learned more bad stuff on the streets. But I, I want to go back to help that kid like me because a lot of these kids they're not bad they're not they're just making mistakes they're guided by the wrong people it's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of help and like I said it's gonna take more guys like me to actually stand up and go back and actually live the life that they're talking about because there's a lot of fakes on on social media now there's a lot of fakes out there that talk to talk but really don't walk the walk and we have to be very, very careful. But I'm fully committed to this movement. I'm fully committed to Wrong Strong. I'm fully committed to my, my neighborhood in Chicago. And, you know, I can only hope that we could do something, even if it's a little. You know? If we get one kid off the street, then we did something. But I don't know shit. My name's JC. I am Wrong Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here, free, not gang banging, not shooting nobody, not being in prison, not being in that mental state of sadness, regret, just the what if. Remember, we can learn, we can change, we can control our emotions, and we can be somebody great, man. Come on, man. Let's do this shit. Just be wrong and strong for one day. My name's JC. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. Laters.